Welcome to Chelsea and Tony Live. You know it must be Thursday. You know it must be 4 o'clock. And we're here today. We're going to be reviewing your adventure-themed photos. That's anything that inspires the mood adventure. So make sure your photo tells that story. Next week, our theme is going to be portraits. That's one anyone can do. Our daughter took this picture. I liked it a lot. And today, we're going to be talking about the new Nikon D6. Yeah, a camera that just might be Canon and Sony for the 2020 Olympics. But first... Let's talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. They made this live show possible so that we could review your photos. They have beautiful designer templates. We use it. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own. And if you go into the description down below, you can check out squarespace.com slash Chelsea. If you use the coupon code Chelsea, you can get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. Go to stp.io slash link and put your portfolio site in, and we will actually look at it during the course of this live show. That's so Cool. Maybe. While you're sending your pictures in, this bit of news. This is the Nikon D6, Nikon's flagship camera. This is everything we know about it. <laughs> it's square. It's black. It says Nikon on it. They literally just gave us a picture and said that they were developing it. And I'm like, yeah, we know. Like, <laughs> we were all expecting a D6 to eventually come, but they just wanted to be like, yes. It's coming for real. So why do you think, because we've never really seen something like this before, why do you think they would announce that this camera is being developed but give us no specs, no information, no price, nothing? My theory is Nikon is afraid of losing DSLR right. customers to the competition, probably Sony. Mm. There are rumors from SonyAlphaRumors.com that the a9 Mark II is going to be announced soon. I don't have any inside information, but that seems very probable. Camera manufacturers always roll out new top-end sports cameras before the next Olympics, and 2020 Olympics is coming. The timing is right. We should see cameras from Canon, Nikon, and Sony in the next couple of months. I think Nikon is nowhere near ready to actually give us like working prototypes, or they haven't even decided on the specs yet, so clearly it's very early, but they don't want everybody to see some crazy Sony A9 Mark II specs and jump ship because Sony is now actually going to be able to compete in venues like the Olympics. So they want people to know like, hey, something new is coming. Just wait until we're ready to give you all the specs. I think they might even have the specs, but they held back in yeah. case the specs don't keep up with the A9 Mark II. Like if they said, hey, this is gonna be a 14 frames per second camera and Sony said, our A9 Mark II is 30 frames per second. Then they're like, oh! Then, then people would just be like, okay, I'm just going to get the Sony. I know what's happening with Nikon. But if Nikon is mysterious, then you see the Sony announcement and you think, I don't know, maybe Nikon's going to make 30 frames per second and I'll just wait. So I think they're trying to proactively kill Sony's fire a little bit. Do you think this is them a little bit like, don't leave me, baby, I'm going to change? Yeah, exactly. Don't leave me, baby. I, I, I can you. change. I'm improving. <laughs> but based on my experience with previous generations, like the D4, the D4S, the D5, here's what I think we're going to see. I think Nikon is going to raise the price. The previous generation launched at $6,500. I think they're going higher because the Z6 and the Z7 were launched so expensive compared to the competition. Mm -hmm. I think Nikon's just trying to make some profit, especially from pre-orders. I think it's going to shoot at 16 frames per second with live view and 14 frames per second with the viewfinder. I think it'll still be limited to 4K 30 internally, but full width or 4K 60 if you hook up an external recorder. They seem to be into that kind of thing now. I think they're gonna take their sensor stabilization from their Z6 and Z7 and bring it into this top end camera. I think they'll offer proper silent shooting when using live view, as well as better live view focusing, as we sort of see the crossover effect from them having proper mirrorless cameras and doing that on sensor focusing technology. Uh, they'll definitely pack two cards into it. I think they're gonna be two XQD cards, just a hunch. And I think they're gonna advertise improved conventional focusing and 3D tracking when using the viewfinder, because that's something that their customers will really care about. There'll probably be also a few other like professional workflow features because that's really what those buyers want. Whoa. I was going to take a picture of that with my phone so that I could then tell you if you're wrong. <laughs> Thanks for your support. 
<laughs> no prob. Let's look at people's adventure photos. We did not get a lot of submissions this week, which is good news for you, because if you're watching live, you can send in something mildly adventure related and we'll probably take a look at it. We're going to be a little broader with the categories. I think it just has to inspire the mood of adventure. I, I think this photo's great. Yeah. Um, oh, a Samsung NX100. Camera that's not really made anymore, but the, I think the picture turned out great. Yeah, and it's beautiful. 47 seconds, so they did a nice long exposure, probably just shot pictures after picture after picture. I love the way it's piercing that lower cloud. Awesome shot. Well, that's a, a food okay. adventure. Oh. From Myanmar. Yeah, I understand that crickets are healthy and inexpensive protein and are versatile. You know how like good of shape I'd be in if that was my snack? Oh, well, I, yeah, I would have literally starved to death. I'd rather eat the newspaper that's underneath it. <laughs> I wouldn't. I heard crickets taste pretty good, but probably wouldn't be eating a whole bag. Yankee lady, my call. Yeah, that's kind of an adventure. I wish you got like someone standing in front of it like they were going to fly it or something to tell more. This lacks a bit of a story to me. Like even the kid in the frame looks passive, but um, I do love your processing, like this very high contrast look. Yeah, and I think these air shows can be so hard because you have people all around that completely distract from the mood. I would probably get low and angle the camera up towards the sky so most of the background is the sky. And then I would... Find a great angle and just wait until people happen to wander out of the frame. You or can... take multiple shots and combine them in order to eliminate people in the frame. Or bring an ND filter and a tripod. Oh, yeah. Do a nice long, long yeah, exposure. Yeah, really long. This was a little uh, family adventure, I'm guessing. The Kiss Museum dino adventure. Um, I think uh, the same thing. You want to think about the background here. I The subject is cool, but we have these lights in the background that you could compose out by getting closer, pointing up at it, using the sky as the background. So just try to be a little bit more immersive about it. Like, and then like maybe have your kid climb in the mouth or something. Well, <laughs> I do that. like that you got the grass in the foreground though. I think that could have been cool if we could, I mean, this isn't a good crop, but just to give you an idea of this different feel, like suddenly the grass looks big and it looks a little more prehistoric. Mm -hmm. You love that tone? I love it. You did so good. You and Thank Peter you. are a good team. Peter, call me. Oh. Here's an adventure. Damien Doris. Here I actually like the distractions. People just walking past. Yeah. This sure seems like New York because where else do people not care if somebody's doing backflips in front of them? Everybody's on their phone. <laughs> okay. Cool shot. Well, we know, I think it's like somewhere else because look at the... His sponsor. Yes. Is he supposed to be running? Sir, are you supposed to be running right now? You've got your runner's number? Okay. Ooh, this, I feel like this is so on theme, Dave. A great picture and also on theme. This makes me feel like I'm in the kayak and I'm on the adventure. It inspires the mood of adventure. It tells a story. It's not just a landscape. I like it a lot. I leveled it, something you're going to have to do in post because you're not going to nail it in camera in a moving kayak, right? I would like to see, um, you know, a mood added in the post-processing as well. <clears throat> Chelsea's going through her presets, which you can buy at Northrop.photo. And after you do that, I would also adjust the white point. I think you've brought the highlights in the sky down some. I can identify that from some amount of fringing around the mountains. But as a result, the histogram is looking washed out. You can see the histogram is nothing over towards the right. So as Chelsea raises that white point, we're just getting more contrast out of the scene. It looks more natural. Hike overlooking the Palouse. Kevin, this is so on theme as well because it's not just the landscape. You're, you've taken a picture of this person with their dog and they're looking out on the landscape. I feel like this is an adventure. I feel like this is almost a still from a movie. It tells such a great story. What do you think? I think this might actually be a, a still from Far Cry. I recognize the dog. <laughs> I don't know what. Right, Justin? Is that that video yeah, game that you play? sounds about right. <laughs> I would actually. That, that video game you play. <laughs> is it? Yeah, that's what it is. Just. <laughs> um, I, 
I like the inclusion of the people. It adds a lot of context to it. Without it, it wouldn't be that interesting. Um, yeah, and I kind of follow their gaze. Yeah. I like that you line them up in the gap Look. between the trees. That adds a little bit of subject separation. Good work, Kevin. Um, just want to, okay. This totally looks like some Mad Max thing, right? I don't even know what these people are going to do. Where are they but going? Like I'm this terrified. hit of mood that you get from the haze and the backlighting really makes it kind of cinematic. Again, I'm feeling very preset-y. <clears throat> I don't know. I like, I kind of like the black and white, but uh, Forrester gives you a cool mood. I like that. Bruno. Wow. What? what? Is that a little boat in the middle? Or yes. Very cool. Would you bring up the whites on this, Tony? Um, yeah, maybe. I think we start to see more of the pinks in the sky. It's it's a it's a really a beautiful shot. I don't know what is going on, but I like it. I'm gonna give it a pick. I mean, it's almost abstract, mm -hmm. and that's what I like about it. It's very cool. Good shot. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, whoa! And the cat. I okay. did not realize how huge this was at first. When I first looked at it, I thought it was small. So having that person there for scale was really good. Yeah, great lesson, Carl. Um, um, yeah, and what a cool shot. That is amazing. We've done ice climbing, which if you ever get the chance to do that is so cool because you get these axes in your hands and you get some some spikes on your feet and you just feel like Spider-Man because you can just go right up a big ice wall like this. I did not feel like Spider-Man because I got tired after one climb. <laughs> And I was like, woo, that's a lot. <laughs> Did you really? Okay. Did we give Carl a pick? You yeah, let's pick him. Spindle Rock. Okay, this almost looks like the Mobius Arch. <laughs> um, This is a good shot. I like the people in it, but I, I don't know why. I want something different. Like, I want them to be a little more maybe aggressive about it. Like, what? well, they're just kind of leaning back and it looks like they're doing the like say cheese kind of smile. And I think we want to capture a little more of that sense of adventure by maybe having them um, stare off into the distance, maybe be a little bit more serious. Maybe they're standing and kind of striking more of a pose. Yeah. You want them to be less passive and more adventurous. Yeah. I still like it. I like the natural framing. Match day. By Will Monk. I, I, I think this is a helmet, but I'm having a hard time even figuring out what it is because the depth of field is so shallow. Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I cannot figure out what sport. Show it us is a little bit anything. more. So, yeah, I guess you know what's going on. So when you look at this picture, it means something to you. But as outsiders, I there's no story here for me. Is it upside down? I can't figure out what it is. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wild mountain gorilla at my feet. That's wild? It's adorable. Oh my gosh, look at his little eyes. Yeah, so what you want to do is just get a wet nap and just wipe some of the gunk out of the eyes. <laughs> Babies, like, typical baby. Yeah. That is so cute. I think I would just up the contrast a little bit. Oh my gosh. Great shot, Grant. I mean, amazing that you got that. Close. Not really adventure, but you got us with the cute animal. I feel like you knew that was going to happen. You don't know. Maybe an angry mom was right behind him. <laughs> okay, Matthew Begley here is definitely on an adventure. The car tells so much of the story with everything packed on top of it. We see the road going off into the background with the hills. But somehow I, I feel like it needs a little something extra. Like, the car is so square. Maybe if it were at a slightly different angle, you know, it's a rally car. I can tell only from the stickers, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it's elevated a little. Often they have like wider track wheels. I think maybe seeing the tires or the car from some other angle that really conveyed its rally capabilities might add a stronger sense to this. Or 
certainly seeing it in motion would really help. Get somebody to oh, kick up some dust on that road. Kick up some dust, track you as you're going past, and you know, shoot it at one thirtieth of a second. So we get some spinning wheels in there. Cool. This is my kind of adventure. Girl in a boat. Um, yeah, I like the color contrast. This like pinky red with the green. That's good color contrast. It's looking like blown out or something. I think it's a little too far away with no context also because I understand that you, you cropped it all the way into the water to get this clean background, but I'm not getting a, a, a full story. I'd like to see where she is, where she's going. Yeah, catch that paddle, like turning up some water, something like that. All right. Woo. Here we have someone very carefully this is so... waiting. That water looks cold. <laughs> it's got that frosty look to it. Yeah, you can even... I like that glacier kind of water. You can go in and raise that. Um, I would, hmm. So the story here is the person crossing the water, and that should be a more prominent part of the scene. I would love to see you as the photographer step into the water and get low and close to where they're stepping. You could take a few different angles. Like I wouldn't mind just seeing the person's feet stepping through the water, but also you could use their whole body and get close to their legs and shoot upwards so that their body even crosses the line of the hill. But really make that the focal point. The story is person crossing water and that should be most of the frame. He is a small subject against a very complex background. So there's not a lot of great background separation here. As an alternative to getting close, you could back up and move so that his body is against maybe just the water here. But as you can see, he kind of disappears into the complex background. What? This is a, such a good mood for adventure. Yeah. Um, I like that you were, what are you at here, 14 millimeters? I like that wide angle look because she's stretching towards us and she's larger in the foreground. Mm -hmm. And she's looking off towards the sec second focal point. Look at the beautiful light streaming in. It's so pretty. I'm yeah. Give you a pick. I think it's an awesome shot. I might have had her take her shoes off though. Not for some reason the shoes don't fit the mood of it for me. They do for me. Okay. I think the shoes are good. You can't take your shoes off in pictures either. The feet people on the internet will get you. <laughs> okay. It's That's... something I'm very aware of. Yeah, and... I haven't encountered them, but we have different experiences on the internet. <laughs> Can we take a question or comment from Chris? That's a good idea. Wow, that was such good alliteration. Yeah, we can. First off, uh, what seemingly unassuming day that you went out one day and ended up turning into an epic adventure for both of you? Oh. I feel like we've had a lot of these. Yeah, because we definitely once... We're in Europe and we were driving, just trying to get from one destination to the next. And we accidentally put the wrong fuel in our car and broke down. And our and the tow truck driver didn't speak English. And then we ended up in Bologna, Italy. And we had no idea what to do there. And no one spoke English. And that turned into a pretty wild adventure. Yeah, I think that's a good example. Oh, we also once were just trying to get somewhere in Cuba and this woman came and pretended to know us and led us into a stranger's creepy house and tried to force <laughs> us to give them all our money and buy cigars. But we literally had no money because we gave it to everybody. Uh -huh. So we were like, we're telling the truth. We have no money. We already gave it to all your friends. And and then we had to like pull out our pockets. I was like, I have a dollar you want it? And they're just like, a dollar? Remember how upset they were? They're like, you, you have no money. <laughs> and then on the way back, we got stuck in Mexico. We are supposed to go straight back. It was supposed to be a boring day of flight. And we got stuck in Cancun at an all-inclusive resort. 
with like a Mariah Carey impersonator yeah. or something. You, so. you that remember, was a weird 24 hours. You guys said you had like a bag of almonds for like two days or something. Yeah, because yes. we did run out of money. And they had and these like and sandwiches there that were like basically spam and we were like splitting them. <laughs> and I just think it's so funny that they tried to like hold us up for money and we had none. We were like, you probably have more money than us right now, man. <laughs> So yeah, we ended up we end up with adventures all the time, mostly because we're trusting and stupid. <laughs> Good times. Here's a picture of Charlie with his ball. Charlie's this isn't adventurous, but I Charlie's think he'd really be Pickle's cute. friend. <laughs> Pixel is our dog. The other day we have these these Pickle. grocery bags that have hashtag Team Pixel on them because Pixel is a Google camera and they just sent us some swag. <laughs> And we have them at the grocery store, and Mad looks at them. Our daughter. And she just, our Madeline, our daughter, and she just drops her shoulders like, You got bags for the dog. <laughs> she thought Team Pixel was for our dog, and that we were just far too much into our dog. And I'm like, No, no, that's the name of a phone. No, we are far too into our dog, but that, that's. <laughs> You're not right. right. But it's unrelated. These are, this is beautiful. Look at this adventure man. Yeah, this is a beautiful comp com composition with the God rays. It was really smart to put somebody in the frame. It would have kind of been boring without it. Oh. <laughs> Chelsea's afraid of sharks. A misunderstood creature for sure. What is this form of air travel? Oh my, okay. This is legit so terrifying. Look at his Snoopy scarf. Like, whoa, bro, you really <laughs> took it to the next level. Um, advice on this, drop that shutter speed down. Get a little bit of panning motion in there. As you can see, it seems like the prop is not even moving at all. You could definitely shoot this at, like, I would probably shoot it at one, 100th or 1 200th and just keep taking pictures so they can get some of that motion. Did this person that. make this? Are those bicycle tires? Please, person, tell me what's happening. This guy is so crazy. I love the scarf. I love the scarf. It's fantastic. <laughs> I hope that's as high as they got. I'm just scared for them. Oh, my gosh. Pow. Uh, we missed focus a little bit, though. Make sure you're in continuous focus mode and probably a single autofocus point. <laughs> And if it's not focusing reliably, then just use a higher f-stop number. Wow, look at this adventure. This is good. He's got a good adventure pose, something some other people were missing. See how he's being, his arms are separated to show the shape of his body. Observe. But subject separation is something else we need to think about. He's wearing all dark clothes and most of his body is against this dark background. Had he just stepped out onto that rock to his left, most of his body would be against the white water and it would better show his form. And especially in a small thumbnail that you might see on Instagram, it would just add that much more pop to it. So try to put them all against that white water background. Awesome shot, Dirk. I'm just, I added a graduated filter just to bring up the exposure of the foreground. Oh, that's and a six second exposure. That dude's good at holding still. This is a still man who's yeah. very good at posing. Um, wow, I'm so impressed. I'm gonna give you a pick. Oh, let's go back to the library here and double click and get out of there. Tony, this is us. Oh, I hope you don't mind, but I'm definitely going to print this. This that's so cool, is amazing. Did I they need to share this immediately? Did they just put our heads on a picture or? Is that all us? I think it's just all us, right? Yeah, that's definitely your very feminine body. <laughs> <laughs> that's not you. I don't Regardless know, though. It's really body. good. Yeah. We have to give that a pick. Look at this guy telling this bald eagle to calm down. He's like, you get the heck out of my yard. <laughs> um, so one tough, I actually have some constructive Okay. feedback for this one. You really have to, um, when you're shooting a bird that's dark and light, like an eagle or an osprey, you, ha you have to expose for the lightest part of the bird. See, so you blew out your highlights on your man bird and your avian bird. So next time, just put your exposure down and it'll be easier to bring up the shadows. 
There's a lot of contrast in this picture, huh? I understand the struggle. I'm not judging you. Yeah. So, yeah, shoot raw and dial in some negative exposure compensation. Good when suggestion. that first came up, I thought that was moose. Oh, it does look like moose. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, my gosh. Look at this adventure. Um, Holy shamoly. Yeah, this is a sellable stock photo. This is yeah. absolutely gorgeous. You get just a pick right away. I just added a little contrast for the face. And also, I love the bright colors, the color contrast. Wow. Just a pick from me as well. I wish his back foot was separated from his leg visually a little bit. Wait, what's this? What's the matter? You feel oh. like you feel like you missed focus? Or no. Oh. What, is, what is that line? Um, I wonder if they had to... Oh, is, is it possible that it's a panorama and they just stitched one image in? I don't know. Maybe they... I don't know. That's a good question for this person, but it's a wonderful photo. Ooh. Huh? Okay, you got me. Um, I don't know what kind of adventure this is. This is an adventure we would get ourselves in, Tony, where they'd be like, come on, come to my house. I, It's fine. And then that's where we'd spend the next week. Okay. Cool adventure, Muhammad. I think we should do a re-import. Hopefully like people sent thing. some pictures in because we need some pictures. Maybe we should start the re-import and then... Talk about a square space. Well, we should, what? I thought we were going to look at someone's um, portfolio. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll look at portfolio. And you know what else we have? Chit chat. I got some pretty good oh, comments. Oh, we have chit chat today. Okay. We have two portfolios we can look at. Mighty Fine Photos or Hexagram Photography. Which one is moving you, Charles? A uh, Hexagram. Okay. Hexagram I, it is. I like their simple logo. And they have some very eye-catching photos. Oh, I recognize this photo from maybe last week or something. Yeah, I recognize that too. I think I even recognize the gents care. Gents care. Okay, let's maybe let's look at the about page so we can find out what their goals are and know who we're talking to here. Yeah, I like to do that as well. Okay. David, David, whoa, I love your picture of yourself. It's creative, but I can see who you are. I get a feel for your personality. Um, okay, you've got a little story about yourself. List some of your clients. You have your pricing, which is great that you have that there. And then, um, let's see. What else do you have? Yeah, I'm interested in influencer advertisement. Oh, okay. That's that first one we were at. So I think this type of photography has become increasingly common for even professionals where you're taking pictures for somebody's social media and just trying to make them look awesome. Definitely. And I think these are all great examples of it. I think more people should get into this because I have um, businesses and people all of the time asking me to do that for them because they see me doing it for myself. And I think that there's a real market for it. I like Umbrella series, David. Um, I am confused about why it's an, in the menu sandwiched between influencer advertisements and portraits. Like these feel like professional advertisements, services that you offer, whereas Umbrella series seems like a personal project. So I would probably rearrange it and stick it at the end or have it in a sub menu of personal projects. These portraits are so beautiful and unique. Yeah, David, you have a very distinctive style. You have yes. Some environmental portraits here. And I love it. I wish you would take my picture. Yeah, those are great shots. Parties and events. I want to look at all of them. You don't have too many photos. I find myself wanting to look at more, which is a good sign. Um, Can't miss his contact information with his email address and phone number there. Yeah, I, I don't know. Captain this seems Hook? like an all-around solid portfolio. All I'm really suggesting is a little bit of a user interface change. I do seems also like love that your website is simple and not distracting from your picture. Sometimes people try to change too many things about their website, and then the website itself, the design, ends up being distracting, and that's not happening here. Like Your photos are front and center, and I'm enjoying looking at them. I think I've looked at most all of them. 
So I'd say good job. David, your architecture photos, it, they're artistic, but they're not the type of photos that represent what commercial paid architecture shots usually look like. So this also feels like a personal project to me. Yeah, I think a personal project. So you might like have a sub menu yeah. of personal projects and stick it under there with the umbrella series. Let's see what David had to say about working with Squarespace. I never read these ahead of time. It could be anything. David says, thanks so much for your suggestions as to what to change. I took two hours to make it more user-friendly and Squarespace template changing was easy. Just a bummer. You can't embed PDF on normal plans. So nobody wants to see your PDF file. That's really hard to work with. Thanks to Tony's code. I got 10% off my first year. Sorry, Chels. I'm offended, but <laughs> I understand you had to choose one of us and you made a bad decision. That happens, but you didn't make a bad decision with going with Squarespace. If you'd like to try out your own Squarespace website, you can just get it for free. They have a 14 day trial and it just takes just a short amount of time to make. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own Squarespace website. Tony and I have ours and we love them. Squarespace is absolutely awesome. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Use the coupon code Tony for 10% off. You'll get a 14 day free trial, no credit card required. So just try it out, but I know you're gonna love it. You could also use the coupon code Chelsea, but David made the right choice, David. <laughs> Hi, David. <laughs> Okay. okay, sure. I see how this is. You want to go right into chit chat or you want to look at some more pictures? Let's look, let's go to chit chat because okay. we haven't done this in a very long time because our comments have been just depressing or boring and now there's something in between. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It seems like YouTube comments have just gotten all just like angry all the time. They're always yeah. like, no matter what it is, I'm like more megapixels. People can see more megapixels. That seems obvious, but everyone's like, how dare you personally attack me? I don't know. Um, <laughs> this guy said, Chelsea, please wash your face next time first. Okay. What happened, Chelsea? Have you been eating spaghetti or something? <laughs> Did you have some lettuce hanging out? <laughs> no, my face was shiny. Oh, it probably the problem is you probably washed your face. Like these studio lights can be rough. But but why would Caesar say that? Look at your face, Caesar. Smile. <laughs> okay, Michael says, Are you guys a <laughs> cannabis users? And then it's edited. That's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. It took him more than one try to get that. <laughs> I feel like Macau might be a cannabis user. Okay. I thought that was cool. And then Aaron Wigo said, I love these two. Are they baked or what? <laughs> Is this just because we have a good time? Guys, I'm high on life. Yeah. I'm I, drinking tea right now. I'm drinking Gatorade. <laughs> it's hydrating me for all these good times. It's cannabis tea. Um, you hated Sony cameras. Don't speak for all of us. And you said I didn't. And he just responded, good. <laughs> <laughs> like, that'll teach me. <laughs> I love I just when there's like, my own experiences. I love when there's a reply because I know I'm going to see what you wrote. Uh -huh. And then this was just golden. Good. Sometimes good. I want to, I wanted to do this thing where it's just like a week of me. I always try to be very polite. Like whenever I respond, I'm like, maybe this person's having a bad week. I don't know where they're coming from. Be polite. But I'd like to have a week where I just do like my first reaction, which would just be like. I hear your first reaction because I'm sitting next to you in the office and it would be savage. people would be shocked. Okay. Manish said, um, why do you both look similar by face? <laughs> I'm glad not by body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think we look similar at all. No. I don't see it. I don't see one similarity. But, and I was going to just end it on that one because that one made me laugh the hardest. Why you both look similar by face. People always want to suggest that we're related, which we are. People say we look like brother and sister. Only because we're married. Is it because we both have big lips? Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know what people are thinking. I, don't, I try not to know what people are thinking. Listen to me like a child with my straw and my Gatorade. Okay, this is great. Sure. I want to see those tires, though, because this is going to be like some kind of rugged off-road car. And there you go. That graduated filter. Big graduated filter means we're not going to get harsh lines or anything. What if it just had little puny bicycle tires? And this is a cool car like it's raised up a little bit it has this stuff put on the top i would make it a more powerful prominent focal point we have this gorgeous background sure that's a given 
Now we're going to spend some time on the car. We have it kicking up a little bit of dust. That's great. Get a little bit more dust in there. Make more passes. Get it a little bit closer. Maybe crank those front wheels a little bit so we can see more of it. You're getting really local over here, Tony. But you don't have to just stop at one shot. Like, keep shooting. Have the person go back and forth, and you'll get an amazing shot out of it. I'm just... I'm giving you a pick. It's great. I... That's why we stopped. I just wanted to give you some areas of improvement. Yeah, you want to see those tires too? Just a little. Yeah. Okay. Those tires are a key part of the story though. That's what tells us we're off road. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just, whoa, what's this? A floating? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a big difference. And you didn't lose the beauty of the sky it just added to the story it kind of looks like a car ad or something i really like it good job steven william i think the real adventure would be walking barefoot yeah Woo. i like more of a story it's definitely a beautiful scene um this oh, is a good story you like went... these... oh those are real people i thought they were the underwater statue people that's very cool do you know about that? The underwater sculptures, they're terrifying. No, I guess not. Um, in a scene like this, when you have a bright white background, I will expose for the person, and then you can use a radial filter. And just she's saying expose for the person in post, like when you're capturing it, you wouldn't want to blow out the highlights, but so true. And I'll like press O, and then you get this mask, and then um. I'll use a brush and I press alt so that I'm deselecting. Oops, my full disclosure, my mouse skills are not great. I use a Wacom tablet. Uh, we get it, you're baked, aren't you? I'm baked. Okay, let's press O again. And then you can lower the exposure of everything around her back to where you wanted it. And then uh, and now we're cooking with gas, kids. That's what my dad always said. <laughs> my dad always said that, too. <laughs> really? I was like, he was right. I am now cooking with gas, so he's a little bit psychic like that. Um, Alan. Oh, wait, let me just get this zoomed back out. I hate it when it starts switching. You can, the... you okay. can, oh. This is an iPhone panorama, which is a great feature to use. I would like you to get a little bit lower. We have this line of the hills here that mirrors the line of her arms. Get her positioned between those two hills and it would just be a little bit better. Yeah. As it is like her head is just clipping that really powerful line and it makes it feel a little bit accidental. Okay. I'm excited about that one. That was a good picture, a good memory for sure. Yeah, you get a pick, Alan. Awesome shot. Whoa, dang. This is an adventure, isn't it? Yeah, they definitely found a cool focal point. Something strange is happening here, J.T. Smith. Yeah, either they've like cranked the clarity up or down, or it's like HDR processing or something. I don't think you needed one one thousandth of a second. Yeah, I don't know. Something's up with the processing. You got some sensor dust going crazy. I think we can... Whoa. Oh, yeah, I have so many problems with sensor dust now that I've gone to Sony yeah <laughs> like truly it's just how why is it like that Tony please tell me <laughs> you it's clearly you I never have had a problem with sensor dust on my Sony <laughs> I've been shooting professionally for over 85 okay, years okay I asked a sensitive question I regret it <laughs> I brought this up and got a lot of snarky comments from people <laughs> apparently it's my fault my lack of skills that attract dust to my sensor <laughs> look at this this cat is having an adventure. <laughs> it's very cute. Uh, let's see. This is definitely giving me adventure vibes. I like that you, yeah, that's really you cool. got this boat right up in the foreground. That's very cool, the canoe. But you have this, the near edge of it is completely out of focus. So I would just push forward a little bit. We don't need to see the entire boat. And having that in the foreground and out of focus is bothering me. Oh, I, I liked it. I guess sometimes we disagree. Speak for yourself, Chelsea. <laughs> I wanted to scroll Holy up. Holy moly. Oh, okay. What are you talking about? How are you going to go past Goat Tree? Did you see that? 
No. That's where goats come from? Oh. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? This is how goats are born. Before. You have? Uh, some breed of goat that they climb up trees like this and just kind of hang out there. I really like it. The tree must be like, tree what the be. hell is going on? <laughs> if trees had a consciousness. Um, hang on, I want to scroll up because this shark picture looked really cool. That does look very cool. Does it wow. bite? Wow. Chris, do you have any comments or questions for us? Yes, wow. we do. We got a good one here from Chris A, and I'll try and give it to you, the whole thing here. Do you think significantly fewer people care about portrait photographers and especially their trade these days compared to before the age of smartphones and digital? In other words, does the rise in the number of available cameras affect the whole trade of portrait photographers? I don't know. That's a tricky question because I do know there was a time when you would just always by default have a professional take your family portraits and now people are using their smartphones. But it also seems like pictures are becoming more valuable um, commercially. So I don't know. Maybe. I guess so. I guess more families are probably taking their own pictures, but um, it seems more important than ever for people to have a business with a presence and a personal presence and having your face out there. So I'm not sure how many of those people pay to have their pictures taken. What do you think? I think it's become decisively uncool to have a professional portrait taken. Uh, like even when we were looking at David's portfolio, he was taking pictures for influencers, but they're styled in such a way that you wouldn't think they were taken by a professional photographer, even though they were. It's called a posy. Oh, okay. I didn't actually know that term. So kids, they, all right. So we had like this term that was like for the kids and it was a selfie. And now that's pretty just <clears throat> universal. And now teen teenagers don't really do that that much. If you look at your kids' Instagram streams or something, like they have their friends take pictures of them pretending to look candid and they're called posies. And that's kind of what we were seeing there is a posy is like, it's really an environmental portrait. Um, and you're looking like you're doing something, but you're very much curating your look and the mood. And it's a photo shoot. It's so interesting to me that we think of professional photography as going away, but it's really just become more accessible and it's far more prominent. And I think now you just have to be creative on how you can be a working photographer in this climate. Um, and it's also hard to convince people their pictures aren't good because I've seen people before where they're like, I do it myself. And I'm like, okay, I, I yeah, <laughs> or, you didn't do a good job, but I, I can't say that. Awesome shot from David. I just love this multiple exposure. Very creative. That gave me an inventor vibe for sure. Yeah. Okay, I think this is really nice. I like that her footsteps are kind of leading you to her. Um, maybe even get a little bit closer to the footsteps, maybe use the footsteps as a nice line, like maybe have the footsteps emerging from the corner of the frame. I, I think it's great. And I don't know that any of those would improve the photo, but I wanted to just toss out some ideas that might help, things I would think about, different iterations I would go through. I'm gonna give you a pick, Mike. Awesome shot. I just think that it's such a, dramatic photo and that with a little processing and time you could could really amp it up are you planning to drop the exposure of those highlights or are you gonna go for a high key look you could do whatever you want this is art okay yeah you're right that's better a little bit brightened up maybe a happy medium between those two don't tell me. Okay. That looks like an adventure, all right. Yeah. That is scary. I, I just wish there were a person on it. We need like a little bit more. You want to put a person on that, Tony? Story to it. Safety first. <laughs> Something about that. I thought it was a doll. <laughs> <laughs> we have been seeing a series of photos in the SDP readers group of just like dolls taken in different oh, yeah. situations and it does kind of resemble that um yeah that's good nice shot, i like Brady. the wow yeah okay this is a good advantage. i wish you hadn't clipped his head but yeah. other than that really nice i like the perspective really it's always good. better to shoot a little bit wide because you can crop later this is great perfect Whoa. subject separation i'm gonna give you a pick on it oh what a nice little story it's really nice i just 
Jim, I just wish you'd focused on them. Yes. But it's still beautiful. Let me see. It's tough because then the trees were overexposed. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, that's that was a cool idea. I like that. Oh, goodness. That looks wonderful. <laughs> we should go live like that. Is that steam fake? Um, I think it's just smoke and... Yeah. I'm too jaded. Sorry, Aaron. Is it because I have done that before? I think it's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where now once I knew fake smoke and steam were a thing, I see like TV shows and movies almost always use fake smoke and steam. I can't unsee it now. Wow, look at that water. What a cool picture. I love that. Yeah, I love shooting into the sun like that. Flaring sometimes is good. We got to crop that extra balloon out, though. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Good call. Whew. I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll give you a pick, Ken. We got through that together as a team. Really cool. I like how you frame them right between these two trees. Really beautiful. You get a pick. Oh, my wife at Machu Picchu. Very cool. Let's try dehaze a little. Nice. Yeah, you got a really kind of foggy day. I would love to see this in maybe a panorama and see just more of the mountains and such. This part is cool, but we I some of these walks you're just scaling the side of a cliff where you would definitely die if you slipped. And so to capture that would make it a little bit cooler. Really cool, Kevin G. Good shot. Love this. I love the processing on this one. Really beautiful. I'd get this one stick out of here. Mm -hmm. I got to give you a pick. Any other questions or comments, Chris? <gasps> nice Ooh, one. That's gorgeous. Pick. I, I remember Tony mentioning this. Nice. Uh, last week or a few weeks ago, you mentioned some modern cameras have built in ND filters, which camera models have them and are they actually filters or it is a software based filter? To the best of my, my knowledge are physical. Um, I know the, what is it? The, uh, Sony, a, what, uh, what is that little, I know it's... the little point and shoot camera that the we RX? have, the RX yeah. 100 mark yeah. Seven? five oh, and five. earlier i think had it and then they removed it for oh. the most recent versions canon just announced the c500 mark ii a cinema camera it has built in nd filters so those are a couple of examples off the top of my head it's not common with like dslr style cameras lots though. of cinema cameras like red cameras and stuff yeah justin's right what else do you have Lots chris so are that's uh, along those same lines is there a reason i i, I gotta believe there is a reason but is there a reason that they they make camera manufacturers can't go to lower ISOs? Like I know the the DA10 goes to 64 and then can simulate going to 32, but why can't they go down to like an ISO of 10? The sensor has like each pixel has a well capacity where it can store a maximum number of photons, and then if any other photons strike the photosite, it can't register it because it's just charged to 100%. And so that kind of defines the lowest ISO possible for the camera. But I've long proposed that they just use the electronic shutter and image averaging, just capture multiple frames with the electronic shutter in sequence with minimal delay between them and then average them together, a simple math problem. And that works, that would work. I don't know why nobody has done it, but give me a simulated low ISO two, just using image averaging and in-camera stacking. Could be a firmware update. Dang, Tony. You got it all figured out. What if they tried it and right now there's an engineer and he's like, I did that. 2017. The project <laughs> almost broke me. Well, the Olympus EM1X will do that, basically. They call it something different. But mm -hmm. they did it and it works great. Everybody could do it. I'm glad Olympus did it. This is a great adventure photo. Let's go through a few more. Um, Whoa, look at those muddy people. Whoa. That one's cool. This one's called oh. Abacus. But we got to get this photographer out of it. 
Oh my gosh, it's 80 feet tall. Hmm. I feel like hikes. we don't get the sense of height, maybe because this person's in the foreground. Uh, well, let's get him out. Let's you, see what happens. Actually crop it? I'm not okay. cropping it. I'm going to. Are you fighting me? Uh, <laughs> Great. Look what we did. Chelsea, that's <laughs> too much crop. crop. Even for me, oh, yeah. it's too much. <laughs> Oh, you're cloning it now. Okay. I hate it when another photographer just like steps in front of my shot. I always look around. If I'm about to walk in somewhere and somebody's behind me, I'm just like, okay, they got here first. I'm not going to do This is going to look so bad, but. No, that's perfect. But you get an idea. Yeah. Okay, let's flip through and see what else strikes us off. Whoa! This is classic. But Classy. Um, beautiful composition. Nice rule of thirds. I somehow. love that the aurora is pointing down at him like he was like, da da, like he made it. Yeah. Look at these children. Can you imagine laundry day? <laughs> I would just keep shooting and maybe you can get both their eyes open. That child's oh, eyes will never gorgeous. open again. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Really pretty. Wow, you're a good time. <laughs> a little bit of like fringing around you, but it's a beautiful picture and I love the processing as well. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. This is fantastic. I'm scared. How did they get the rays kind of coming out of the house? Is that just done in post, you think? I think they put a light right here in front of him. Oh, and then it's like a hazy yes. day. But I don't know why you'd actually see rays, though, unless there's like a grid over it or something. Hmm. Could be. Interested. I'm interested in the technique behind that. Great shot. I think it's real. It's yeah, real. I, I get. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> but if they write and they're like, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Duped again. Okay. Well. If you fooled Chelsea, it's a pretty good fake. Thank you, Tony. Look at these little rascals. Why is he shooting lettuce? What? What kind of health lettuce. food <laughs> nonsense is this? It's Kids probably these days, man. it's a new diet. I only eat vegetables thrown into shot my mouth my face. with <laughs> a slingshot. I find it burns calories. Who's this? That is the exact face I make when I read our comments. It's like a howler monkey. These guys are jerks. Um, let's look what? at this four-wheeler. Why would you say that? Because this is a good example. Well, we got this dude with the GoPro. That's one picture at a time. But we got the wheels spinning. We got some some snow kicking up. We can see the wheels. It's It's awesome. Except for the dude with the GoPro. What? I like the guy. He's a part of the fun. Um, great job. We clipped the higher so just remember shoot a little bit wider than you think you need to oh i love this shot <laughs> yeah that's pretty what good what a good moment i really like that very unusual did you see this dog just so well framed by the road yeah that's nice adventure dog i think our dog would be jealous if if they saw that <laughs> holy shamoly but look pictures that really strike us it's Whoa, well, what's happening? I like the scene and the composition, but I think you went a little too far with the um, with the processing. But I got to say, from the thumbnail, you blew my mind. Yeah, bracket your shots. Get some even longer oh. exposure so you can get those, <gasps> It looks like God blessed him with this fish. That's fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a cow wolf picture we got to look at. This How is beautiful. Know? Just that gets a pick right away. Yeah. The silhouette here is fantastic. That's the so leading cool. line. Go to one fifty six. <gasps> oh my gosh. Have you oh yeah, I see Kyle. Awesome oh that's shot, not Kyle. Kyle. That's Kyle's friend. Hi Kyle's friend. <laughs> like it. Did you see this one with the shadow baby? That is a shot I've not seen before. I gotta say, you are in for an adventure if you got this little spooky baby coming at you. <laughs> you think that's done in post or No, that's real. <laughs> this is cool. I like this shot. Very cool. Love the gels. Nicely Gosh, done. I gotta go back to the spooky baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're really thinking about that. <laughs> I love it. If someone told me that was an option, I would have had a maternity sh shoot done. No one told me. 
No one showed me. Wow, so many great shots. It's Dude, not too late. We could like all are so adventurous. Have a shadow of a slice of pizza on your belly or something. <laughs> <laughs> Burrito. What are you trying to say? That you're not pregnant, but you eat burritos. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Sometimes I like to say some stuff and then the comments, like people have these very traditional relationship things where they're like, oh, you're going to sleep on the couch tonight. And I just <laughs> think it's funny. <laughs> I got him going last time because I said I wasn't excited about my own wedding, meaning the hypothetical wedding I would eventually have as a younger person. And then they got really like sad for you. Um, Beautiful this show. is very cool. I'm going to give you a pick as well. That looks like a great adventure. Okay. I feel like we did it. Sorry, I can't stop. Look, look at the birds in the background. Get a pick. Beautiful shot. I love the people fading off into the distance. It's Let's like take framing. another question from Chris. Okay, one more question, okay. then we'll get out of here. I think we have okay. a place to be. Uh, is there, I think there's a big difference in how much saturation and contrast photographers in Scandinavia and the U.S. add to their pictures. This is from a gentleman from Finland. Are you familiar with the term Scandinavian colors, less saturated, low contrast colors mixed to less pure color versus the way Americans tend to oversaturate things? Have you ever heard of that? Um, I would I'm say not. there is an oversaturated style, but I would not say that that's American style because that more desaturated look is also just a very popular look right now. Um, so... I've never really you might have a different perspective. The different countries might have different post-processing styles, but I will say yeah. people in Scandinavia in general tend to be more minimal, lead a less saturated life. You know what I mean? Like they're kind of yeah, basic and minimalistic. I don't mean basic in a mean way. I just mean they don't like when we've been there. They, I throw hot sauce on everything. <laughs> they don't really do that. You think it's like a cultural difference? I yeah. have seen differences with post-processing in let's say like India. But then mm. also I could just be taking the photos I see there and then like generalizing. So I guess I don't have any real like concrete evidence. It would be a tough question to answer. Yeah. You got anything else before we head out, Chris? Yeah, well, this one here, kind of uh, interesting. When a camera, with a camera that can handle low light well, maybe it's a, a less expensive model that doesn't have great noise reduction. How can the noise, what steps can you take to reduce noise in low light without causing softening of detail or edges? Um, so I have a video that shows the best technique I can really offer. I mean, shoot raw, watch your histogram, try to use the slowest shutter speed possible, get a faster lens. Yeah, I was going to say fast. Clock. Shoot it at f1.4. Um, what is the name of my video? It's like... It's that one with the lighthouse. Do you remember it, Justin? Oh. Is it something about time? Was that what I'm thinking of? I did this really complex processing where I stacked a bunch of images, including any sort of movement. <laughs> what? Can you go up? Oh. Did someone just say Hitman for hire over our video? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> What? what is what do we we never talked about okay all right just i made a huge mistake going to youtube a huge mistake <laughs> i suggest staying off of youtube if anybody is watching what just happened so i have a video but i can't remember what it's called but i processed like 36 images taken in low light and manually removed any sort of movement in the images in order to greatly reduce and in, reduce noise and increase sharpness I hope that helps. I'm still just reeling from what I just saw. I feel like I'm going to have PDS. PDS. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Next week, we're going to be looking at your portraits and reviewing them and offering some tips and advice. Uh, thank you, Chris and Justin, for helping us out. And if you want your own cool website or photography portfolio with a store, they, uh, they offer those options. Great analytics. You can go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. We have everything in the description below. And you can get that 14-day free trial. You don't need to, like, remember to cancel or anything. They don't need a credit card. Just try it and see if you like it. See you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, Chris. Thanks for your help. See ya. Bye. Thank you, Justin. By the way, that is all. By the way? <laughs>